How you guys doing? This is Tony here. And as I made clear in my video called What Counts as Native American, I explained that I identify myself as a mixed-blooded Native American. And a lot of times Native Americans who live on the reservation take issue with we mixed-blooded Native Americans because they look at us as trying to steal their identity or if we don't have all the paperwork to prove how Indian we are, somehow we don't count as Indian and that they have more of a right to be called Native American than we do or some other argument like that. And I just wanted to make a response to that general school of thought. Now, first of all, when a Native American tells you that whether or not someone counts as Native American has everything to do with whether or not they can document which ancestor on the Dawes Rolls or which ancestor that lived in this reservation, what they're doing is cheapening the Native American identity down to just the level of paperwork. They're just saying that whether or not you're Indian is a matter of paperwork. And that is an inconsistent standard to apply to Native Americans because if someone claims to be white, you don't make them show paperwork of which part of Europe their ancestors came from. You don't make them show the ship records of which ship their ancestors came to the United States on. If someone is white, and they identify as white, it's generally accepted. Same thing with African Americans. You don't make them prove, well, which part of Africa did your ancestors come from and which plantation did they come off of? And so if you don't make other ethnicities prove their ethnic identity, why should Native Americans have to do the same thing? That's a hypocritical standard. And I believe that a lot of it is tied up in money because if more people that are of Native American ancestry prove that they are able to succeed and survive in mainstream society without the aid of federal dollars toward a reservation or anything like that, then what that would do is make people start saying, ah, maybe the Indians don't need these reservations if they're able to survive off of them. I think that's the real reason why a lot of these natives living on the res get so stuck up about who gets to call themselves a Native American because they fear that it's going to affect their ability to stay on the reservation and receive special treatment from the United States government. Frankly, I believe that the reservation is not necessary for Native Americans, and I believe it actually hurts us more than helps us because it creates this idea that you are a victim, that you cannot survive in mainstream society, which is not the case. And all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. If you are to work hard and just be a good person and do the right things, then you have a good chance at making a good life for yourself, regardless of whether or not the United States gives you special land to do that on. Not only this, but if you look at a lot of the natives that are on the res, a lot of them, like I said before, are just as white as can be. When Elizabeth Warren's blunder came out where it was revealed that she's only a thousandth Native American, you had a lot of these so-called members of the Cherokee Nation who came on the news and were basically talking about how she doesn't get to call herself Indian, but you look at them, they are just as white as she is in complexion. You see a lot of white people intermarried with the Native Americans. A lot of black people intermarried with the Native Americans, producing a mixed race group of people. And a lot of those mixed race people just happened to have better documentation and got to stay on the reservation, despite how little Native American blood they actually had in them. When I was researching this topic, I came across blog posts where there were people who are registered Native Americans living on the res who say, I don't know anything about the culture. I don't know anything about the history. I look white. I call myself white. The only reason I'm still living on the reservation is because I had an ancestor who was legally allowed to live on the reservation. So at that point, they have the paperwork, but they don't have the appearance or the culture. Why does that person then get to stand and in judgment of someone else who's calling themselves Native American when they're not really that much Native American themselves. That makes absolutely no sense. That's why you can't say that someone's ethnic identity is solely a matter of paperwork. That is the most weak and flimsy argument I've ever seen. When it comes to the Cherokee Nation, they're especially stuck up about this. But the fact of the matter is, like I said before, very few Native Americans stayed pure. Most of them mixed with other groups. And so if you have a bunch of medium brown skinned people out there who are obviously mixed with white ancestry who call themselves African American and no one questions that and if you have a bunch of white people out here who might have a more olive complected skin because they have some distant black ancestry but no one questions their ability to be white why do mixed race Native Americans get so much crap about 
being able to identify as mixed as Native American. At the end of the day, not every person who identifies as Native American is looking to get some sort of benefit from it or some sort of leg up on a job or some sort of money. As an example, take myself. I identify as mixed blooded Native American. Whenever I'm given the chance to fill out a census record or whatever, I just check Native American. Now, I, in my younger years, I used to check everything, but I decided that was doing too much. That's too much work. And so I just decided to just check Native American. It's the one I primarily identify as anyway. I believe it plays most into my appearance and my life experiences. And I've done my due diligence to look up as much of the culture as I, as I care to. But with all of that said, at the end of the day, I don't expect any special treatment just for being Native American. I don't expect people to say, oh, you poor baby, your ancestors were displaced. Here's some federals. I don't care. You know why? Because I want to work by the sweat of my brow. I want to make a living succeeding, doing what I have to do and through much hard work, not through just someone giving me a pass because I'm the right skin color or anything like that. As an example, when I was in high school and I was applying for colleges, uh, Dartmouth University sent me an invitation for something called a native fly-in, which is when they were trying to recruit Native American students for their university. And I, I turned it down. I didn't want to go because I wanted to be known for how smart I was, for how capable I was. I didn't want to be known for what my skin color was. I believe that when Native Americans that are living on the res use what happened in the past and use their skin color as an excuse to keep receiving benefits when they're maybe not necessarily all of them not taking an active role in bettering their own lives, I believe that is a sorry cop-out. And so if you have a Native American that's a mixed-blooded Indian that's out there that's not living on the res, that's working for a living, that's not receiving any special treatment, who are you to judge that person when they're actually making a living and they're doing it without any help, without any assistance? That's the ultimate hypocrisy of the Cherokee people because... You had this woman that came on the news, I don't care to remember her name, and she made fun of mixed-blooded Native Americans. She said, everybody on the East Coast has that story of their grandmother being Cherokee, and it's just false. It cheapens our identity. Well, here's the thing. The Cherokee were one of the largest tribes in pre-Columbian America. When the Europeans started trading with the natives, they labeled them as one of the five civilized tribes. Why? Because they assimilated and integrated with the colonist culture most successfully. And so as a result of that, you had a lot of Cherokee marrying white people, marrying colonists, and that blood getting mingled. And you even had a lot of escaped slaves who married into the Cherokee. You even had Cherokee who owned African slaves, and some of them ended up mixing together, having children together. So whites, blacks, and Native Americans have been mixing for over a century. Is it any surprise that a lot of self-described white people and a lot of self-described black people also claim Cherokee ancestry? I can't imagine for the life of me why a Cherokee would find that an insult. If anything, that just goes to show how prolific their ancestors were. That shouldn't be something you fight. That should be something you embrace because a lot of us mixed blood Native Americans aren't looking for sympathy. We're just looking to show what the history of our identity is. We're not looking for, I wouldn't even dream of wanting to live on a res because I want to be able to choose where I live and if I don't like the neighborhood, I wanna be able to move somewhere else. I don't wanna just be, well, this is what the federal government says you can live on, so I guess you're stuck here. You gotta deal with everything. Like, I don't want that. I want to exercise my choice. I want to work hard. And so in the tail end of this video, I'm going to just give a brief explanation of what I think counts as Native American in terms of mixed blooded people. I think it boils down to this. Does your Native American ancestry affect your appearance? If so, then I believe you have a strong case for identifying as Native American. It's no d different than you might have someone who's mixed with white and black. They might look more white and identify as white. They might look more black and identify as black. It's a matter of personal interpretation as long as you're not lying about the fact that you actually have Native American in your background. So if it affects your appearance, if it affects your life experiences, and if it affects your identity, I believe that's cause enough to identify as Native American. Again, you have white people walking around the United States right now. Don't speak a word of Gaelic. Don't speak a word of Italian. Don't speak a word of French or wherever their ancestors came from, but that doesn't disinherit them from their identity. So why should Native Americans be subject to the same scrutiny? The only difference 
between Native Americans and other ethnic groups is that the federal government gives Native Americans funds out of sympathy and doesn't really do that for other ethnic groups. And so that's why I believe that you really can't be so overly obsessive about who's Native enough. If that person looks in the mirror and, and, and if that person is legitimately of Native American descent, they look in the mirror and they see a Native American, or if that somehow affects how they've been treated in life or who's accepted them in life, then that person has a valid reason to count as Native, whether or not they're benefiting from that, whether or not they have all the paperwork and all of the tax dollars. It, actually, that goes to cheapen the Native identity because it makes us look like victims, that all we can do is just live on the res and drink ourselves to death. That's not how all Native Americans live. And so the ones on the res don't get the right to speak for all of us. I have lived my life as a Native American for over a decade, like I have explained to you, for most of my adult life, and actually the entirety of my adult life. And I have never had a situation where someone said, oh, well, you're not Native enough. That's never happened to me. I've had Native Americans accept me, converse with me on numerous occasions, ones I've interacted with. I've had times I didn't even disclose that I was of Native ancestry, and Natives would be able to look at me and say, oh, you must have some Indian in you. And I've had this happen numerous times. And that affects my self-perception and my life experiences. Growing up, I never fit in with black people. I never grew up around white people. And so that's just sort of the niche where I fit in. The, the group that I descend from that accepted me the most as a child were the Hispanics. They were my friends also. You know, I've already disclosed that I'm part Mexican. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, if you look at natives, the identity varies. Not everyone's looking for sympathy. Not everyone's looking for a handout. A lot of us mixed blooded are just identifying that way because we believe our grandmother, because we have no reason to doubt her, and because we look in the mirror and see a blended heritage and we just chose one identity to identify more with. And if you look at the natives on the res, a lot of them are just as white as they come. And so they don't get to choose who's native and who's not native when they're not even fully native themselves. So let's just dispense with all of this conflict and let's just go on about our lives because whether we're black, white, or whatever, we're all human at the end of the day.